All right, so the problem that we're going to cover today is about primary and secondary non-disjunction and what happens when you cross the ova and the eggs and the sperm of non-disjunction to back to the parents. So in this situation over here, as a famous and mad scientist, you have cleverly devised a method to isolate Drosophila ova that have undergone primary non-disjunction of the sex chromosomes. Now, just a quick review, primary non-disjunction is when the chromosomes don't split up properly during meiosis. That can happen in meiosis 1 or 2. Either way, what ends up happening is that in the non-disjunction eggs or the sperm, you have some gametes that have double the amount of chromosomes they need and some that have like half. And so if it's in the X chromosome, like in this situation, and where you use female homozygous for the X-linked recessive mutation causing white eyes as your source of non-disjunction ova. In this case scenario, what we would have is if you had two X chromosomes in a female ova and it went through meiosis, what ends up happening is once you go through it, the eggs don't split up properly and you get two X chromosomes in one and none in the other and those split up to give you two X chromosomes in one gamete, two X chromosomes in one gamete, and this gives you none in either one. And so you have empty. And so the genotype of this gamete would actually be WW and so just one W allele, and here would be nothing. And you can represent that by like a circle. Now, over here we have the ova were collected and fertilized with sperm from red-eyed males. Now, if it's a red-eyed male, that means the genotype of that male was W plus and Y. And this is the way of presenting the Y chromosome. So these gametes, and if say they went through normal disjunction, would end up either having the W plus allele or they had the Y chromosome. And the W plus allele will be on the X chromosome, by the way. So the progeny of this engineer cross were then back crossed separately to two parental strains. So what class of progeny, genotype, and phenotype would you expect from these back crosses? So in order to solve this problem, you have to do the first part, which is crossing the primary non-disjunction uh, ova with a red-eyed male and then back crossing it to the parents. And so uh, over here, let's do this. We have, let's do a Punnett square. Now in primary non-disjunction, we, like we said, one gamete possibility is giving two of the X chromosomes at once, and the other one possibility is giving neither, right? And with the male, there's a possibility of either giving the X chromosome with the W plus allele for red eyes, and a possibility of giving a gamete with the Y chromosome. And so our possibilities are so. We have three X chromosomes on one of the offspring, right, with the W plus allele for red eyes. Then we have another offspring who just has the W plus allele with nothing else, so it's just one X chromosome. Over here we have another possible gamete that has two X chromosomes and a Y chromosome. This would be, this would be white eyed. And we have another possibility of just having the Y chromosome. Now we have to rule out what are the possibilities that we can't take as for the back cross. And so those possibilities include this lonely Y chromosome. If you have one Y chromosome as a Drosophila fruit fly, you cannot live. If you have three X chromosomes, you also cannot live. These are inviolable. Now, these two over here will survive. However, which one of these can we pick for the back cross? If you only have a W plus allele, and, or it's basically only the X chromosome and nothing else, you cannot back cross because you are sterile. You're a male, but you're sterile. So just to mention, this is a male because there's only one X chromosome. It's a one to two ratio from sex chromosomes to autosomes. But here you have two X chromosomes. And since the you know fruit flies are diploid, two X chromosomes, two autosome uh, chromosomes for each, this is going to be female. But anyways, males with only one X chromosome and no Y chromosome are going to be sterile. So this will also be canceled out and we won't be able to use it for the back cross. So the only possible back cross we have is for this female. Now we have to also mention, how is this female going to split up its chromosomes? Since it has a W, W, and a Y chromosome. This is an X chromosome, an X chromosome, and a Y chromosome over here. How is this going to split up? Well, in its, when during, it's going through meiosis, you're going to have the two X chromosomes are going to line up just like normal meiosis. But the Y chromosome is going to be unpaired. It's going to be by itself. And so, the only possibility of happening for this is getting one gamete that has the X chromosome and the Y chromosome and the other with just the X chromosome. This is normal. So this is meiosis one. And this splits again. You're going to get one of the alleles for the X chromosome and one of the alleles for the Y chromosome. X chromosome, Y chromosome. And then this over here would be pretty normal and just have one allele for each of the X chromosomes, right? And so 
a possibility of this happening would just be wy. This would be the geotype of this gamete. This would be wy. And this would just be w. Now, this is just regular disjunction right here. But there's also another type of disjunction called secondary dis non disjunction. And this occurs about 4% of the time only, but it's when the pairing of the chromosomes in meiosis does not occur properly. It's where it happens where you have actually a Y chromosome pairs up with the X, and one of the X's does not pair up with the other, right? And what ends up happening is that the two X chromosomes go to one gamete, and the Y chromosome goes to the other gamete. And so these split up, and this gives you. One allele for the Y chromosome, another possible allele for the Y chromosome right here. And over here we have two X chromosomes, or two X alleles, and two X alleles. So the genotype for this would be WW, WW, and this would be just the Y chromosome allele, right? So you have to consider two possibilities for the Punnett squares. And so instead of a Punnett square, it's more likely going to be like a Punnett rectangle. But since we mentioned that this is actually a female, the one with the WW and the Y chromosome, that means it's going to have to be back across to the male parent, which if we recall was W plus and a Y chromosome. He had an X chromosome with the dominant leader for red eyes and he had the Y chromosome. Now if we back cross this with over here, we're going to split it in half. We're going to consider the situations where you have normal disjunction and secondary non-disjunction. This remember, this is only about 4% of the time, but this is secondary non-disjunction right here. And this is what happens when you have disjunction again for the second time because of the offspring. So I'm just going to mention that right here. So for the regular disjunction, like we said, we're going to have either W, Y, or W as the possibilities being given. And for secondary non-disjunction, we said it's going to either be W, W, or just the Y chromosome. And so I'm just going to write it like that. Now, these possibilities are going to give us W plus W and Y. So this is going to be a red-eyed female. Over here is W plus W, another red-eyed female. Over here, we're going to be given W, Y, and a chromosome. So we're going to have W and then two Y chromosomes. Let me just write this Y chromosome properly. All right. And so this is going to be a white-eyed male, and it will not be sterile. And then over here, we'll have a W, Y. This is a normal male. So this is going to be a non-normal female, right, with an extra Y chromosome. A normal female that's red-eyed as well. A non-normal male, but is not sterile. It can, they can still reproduce. And is a white-eyed, and we have a normal white-eyed male. So, it's just a one-fourth possibility for all of these possible genotypes. So, I'm just going to write them out. One-fourth for each. For the genotypes, right? This is for the genotypes. Now, when you add them up, they're going to be half-half for in terms of phenotypes. But, these add up to be one-half total for one-half red-eyed female. So, red female, right? But the genotypes are different. And over here, these add up to one half white males. But the genotypes are different. So make sure you keep note of that. Now, when we do the secondary non-disjunction, over here we get W plus WW. This will die because you have too many X chromosomes. Over here we have W plus and the Y chromosome. This is going to be a red-eyed male. And then over here we have the WW and Y chromosome. So it's going to be a white-eyed female. And you have the Y chromosome, Y chromosome. This dies. So, in reality, for the secondary non-disjunction, we have one half of the time we get a red-eyed male. And over here, we have one half the time we're getting a white female. Now, if we really wanted to figure out the true percentages, we can actually multiply these by their percentages and figure out the total probability of any possible um, essentially phenotype. And so if we multiply red female, so which is one half, right, by 96% chance, which is 0 0.96, right, we get a 48% chance of getting a red female. And over here, if we have a one half chance of getting a white male multiplied by 96% chance of regular disjunction, you also get a 48% chance of a white male. So white male here, and white eyed male at least and red female. And if we do the same thing for the secondary non-disjunction, we can have the probability of one half of getting a red male, right? With the 4% chance of that happening, we get a 2% chance of getting a red male. And if we do the same thing for a white female and 4% chance, you will get a 2% possibility of getting a white female.
And so those are your total probabilities for the back cross of a primary non-destruction ova going through a back cross with its parent. And it's also considering the possibility when you have secondary non-destruction. So just to review real quick, primary non-destruction, you have separation of the chromosomes does not occur properly. You get either double or none. When you back cross it, you get some that will die out because you have too many or too little X chromosomes. Some will be sterile because they don't have a Y chromosome when they're male. And then that ova, essentially, will also go through disjunction. One of it will be normal, but it will actually end up having two alleles, a W and a Y. And the other one will just have one allele, which is pretty normal. And they can go through secondary non-disjunction. This right here is secondary non-disjunction, where the pairing of the chromosomes does not occur properly. Over here, you might get gametes with two X chromosomes, and here, you just get gametes with just a Y chromosome by themselves. But that only happens 4% of the time. So when we consider the fact that only considers happens 4% of the time, we see that only 2% of the time we have the oddball phenotypes.